In this video, we're going to begin graphing exponential functions, and these will be exponential functions that both grow and decay over time. Now, before we can actually graph an exponential function, we need to know what on earth an exponential function is. Now, this word function we've seen before. By definition, a function is something where each input has one output. And we've graphed two different types of functions. We've graphed the linear function, which is at y equals mx plus b. And we've graphed the absolute value function, which is y equals, and then we have something with the absolute value function going on. So those are two types of functions we've focused on so far. Today we're going to focus on a new function that is called the exponential function. So the first piece is notice how all of these have y and x. Our exponential function will have y and x as well, but the big thing is this word exponential or the word exponent. What that is telling you is that the x value will be in the exponent. So when we have an exponential function, it will look something like this. y equals 2 to the power of x, or y equals 3 times 2 to the power of x, or y equals 4 times 1 half to the power of x plus 7. Notice that in every single one of these examples, x is in the exponent, and that is what makes something an exponential function. So now we're going to actually jump in and start graphing these. So notice here that we have the exponential function y equals 2 times 4 to the power of x. And remember that we know that this is an exponential function because we have x in the exponent. Now when we graph exponential functions, what I always suggest to students is I suggest that you make a table of values. And just like we did with linear graphs, I suggest using the x values of negative 2 to 2. Those aren't the required values, but that's what I suggest to get a good idea of what this graph looks like around the y-axis. So what we're going to do is we're going to take each value for x, and we're going to substitute it into the equation in place of x, and then find the y value that pairs with it. So for this first one, I'm going to take x equals negative 2. So I'm going to do that right next to this. And here we have y is equal to 2 times 4 to the power of negative 2. Now while this looks a little bit tricky, we luckily have been working with exponent properties. So we as a result know how to simplify this so we don't have any negative exponents. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this over 1. And I'm going to rewrite this with a positive exponent. So here I have 2 in my numerator and 4 to the power of positive 2 in my denominator. Now 4 to the power of positive 2 is something that I can evaluate. So I have 2 over 16. And then that is something that I can simplify further because they are both divisible by 2. So I find that y is equal to 1 eighth. So when x is equal to negative 2, y is equal to 1 eighth. Then from here, I move on to the next one. So I have x is equal to negative 1. So here we have y is equal to 2 times 4 to the power of negative 1. Again, I want these to have a positive exponent, so I'm going to rewrite it. So I have 2 over 4 to the power of positive 1 which is really 2 over 4, or 1 half. Then from here I move on to my next x value, which is x is equal to 0. So I have y is equal to 2 times 4 to the power of 0. Now I know that anything to the power of 0 is equal to 1, so I really have 2 times 1, which is 2. Then from here I have x is 1. So this becomes y equals 2 times 4 to the power of 1. 
Now here I need to use order of operations. I know that exponents come first, so this is really 2 times 4 to the power of 1 is 4, which is 8. And then from here, the last one I have is x is equal to 2. So then I have y equals 2 times 4 to the power of 2, which again I use order of operations, so exponents are first. So I have 2 times 4 to the power of 2 is 16, which is 32. And then I'm going to take these values and I'm going to plot them onto my coordinate plane. And I'm just going to plot the ones that I can actually get to fit. So 2, 32 doesn't fit. 1, 8 does. So that's the point 1, 8. Then I have the point 0, 2. Then I have the point negative 1, comma, 1 half. And then I have this point down here of negative 2, comma, 1 eighth. So what I notice is that it's not a line. This is a different looking graph. It looks kind of like a swoosh. And what's really happening here is this graph is getting closer and closer and closer and closer to this x-axis, but never quite crossing. And then it's growing exponentially very, very quickly to the right. So here I have my little swoosh, noticing that it's not quite crossing over the x-axis. It's just getting very, very close. And you can even draw a little line in here. This is actually called a horizontal asymptote. And that's kind of representing the barrier, showing that our graph is getting very, very close to where y is equal to 0, but it's not quite crossing over that line. So the last thing we need to do here is we need to find our domain and range. Remember, our domain uses the x values to create points on our graph. And what I notice here is that my graph is going forever to the left and forever to the right, which tells me that my domain is all real numbers because I need every single x value to make the points on my graph. Then my y values, what I'm noting is I'm going up forever and I'm not going down forever. What's essentially happening is I'm getting very, very close to zero, but not quite crossing it. So I'm using all of the positive y values, every single one, but I'm not utilizing zero. And how we can represent that is we can say all of our y values are greater than, but not equal to, not quite touching, not quite reaching, zero. So now that we've done one example, let's try out a second one, but this time let's make this value out in front a negative number. So here notice that we have an exponential equation because we have x here in our exponent and as a result to create an accurate graph of this we're going to make a table by picking x values from negative 2 to 2 and finding the y values that pair with them. So let's start with x is equal to negative 2. So I start and I have y is equal to negative 2 times 2 to the power of negative 2. And remember that we do not want to have negative exponents. Negative number bases are fine, but negative exponents are not. So I'm going to rewrite this with a positive exponent instead by moving it to the denominator. So I have negative 2 in my numerator and 2 to the power of now positive 2 in my denominator. Then here I have negative 2 over 2 squared is 4 which simplifies to be negative one-half. So when x is negative two, y is negative one-half. Then from here, I try x is equal to negative one. So I have y is equal to negative two times two to the power of negative one. Again, I do not want negative exponents, so I move that into the denominator. So I have negative two over two to the power of one which is really negative 2 over positive 2, which is negative 1. Then from here, I move on to x is 0. So we have y is equal to negative 2 times 2 to the power of 0. Well, I know anything to the power of 0 is really 1, so this is really just negative 2. Then from here, I'm going to do x is equal to 1. So we have y is equal to negative 2 times 2 to the power of 1, 
which if I evaluate the exponent first is negative 2 times just 2, which is negative 4. And then finally, we try x is equal to 2. So we have y is equal to negative 2 times 2 to the power of 2. Evaluate the exponent, we have negative 2 times 4, which is negative 8. So then from here, I go over to my graph, and I can start to plot these points. So I have the point x is negative 2, y is negative 1 half x is negative 1, y is negative 1, x is 0, y is negative 2, x is 1, y is negative 4, x is 2, y is negative 8. So what I can see here from my graph is that as it moves to the right, it's going down very, very quickly. But as I get closer and closer to where that y value is zero, it starts to taper off and it basically forms what's called a horizontal asymptote there. So again, remember we've got this imaginary line here that we don't cross. It gets very, very close to that line, but it doesn't quite cross over it. So now that we have an accurate graph, we can find the domain and range. So here, the domain, what I notice is that my x values are going forever to the right and forever to the left. So I need all real numbers for x to make points on this graph. And what I also notice is that I'm using all of the y values that go down, and then I'm using all of them all the way up to but not including 0. So the 0 is the point that I'm not including, but it's like that barrier point that I want to reference. So all of my y values are less than but not equal to 0. So now let's take a look at an example that contains a fraction. So notice here we have y equals 4 times, and then we have 1 half, the fraction, to the power of x. So we have an exponential function, but our base here of our exponent is actually a fraction. So let's start off by taking our x values and calculating the corresponding y values. So let's start with x is equal to negative 2. So here we have y is equal to 4 times 1 half to the power of negative 2. Now this is where our exponent properties really come into play. So remember here that the 1 and the 2 both have exponents of 1. So what we can do here is we can say y is equal to 4 times, this is really 1 to the power of 1, 2 to the power of 1, and what we can use here so we can use our powers to powers rule to get rid of these parentheses. So we can multiply each power by negative 2. So we end up with 1 to the power of negative 2 over 2 to the power of negative 2. And then from here, we know how to write these with positive exponents. We move them to be their reciprocal. So what we really have here is y is equal to 4 times 2 squared over 1 squared, which is really 4 times 4 over 1, which is really 4 times 4, which is 16. Then from here we move on to x equals negative 1. So we have y is equal to 4 times 1 half to the power of negative 1. Again, we can use our powers to powers rule here, so we have 4 times 1 to the negative first over 2 to the negative first. Then we can use our negative exponent rule to rewrite these as positive exponents. So we have 4 times 2 to the first over 1 to the first which is really 4 times 2 over 1, which is 4 times 2, which is 8. Then we move on to the next one. So we have x is equal to 0. So here we have y is equal to 4 times 1 half to the power of 0. Well, I know anything to the power of 0 is just 1, so I have 4 times 1, which is equal to 4. Then we have x is equal to 1, so y is equal to 4 
times 1 half to the power of 1. Using powers to powers, that's 1 to the first over 2 to the first, which is really 4 times 1 over 2. Turn 4 into a fraction, we multiply across, so we get 4 over 2, which is 2. And then finally, x is equal to 2. So we have y is equal to 4 times... 1 half squared. Use the powers to powers rule, so we have 1 squared over 2 squared, which is then 4 times 1 over 4. Turn that 4 into a fraction, multiply across, so we have 4 over 4, which is equal to 1. So now let's take our points and plot them on our graph. So we have negative 2, 16, that one doesn't quite fit. Negative 1, 8 does fit right there. 0, 4, 1, 2, 2, 1. So I see this general swoosh shape again. I know that my graph is getting very, 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 very close to this x-axis here. And then I can draw in my horizontal asymptote that I don't quite cross right there. So I can see my graph is getting very, very close to that x-axis, but not quite crossing it. Now lastly, I need to find my domain and range. I notice that my x values are going forever to the left and forever to the right. So my domain is all real numbers. And then my range, I'm using all the positive y values, so they're going forever up, going all the way down to zero, but not quite touching zero, which means my range is y is greater than, but not equal to, zero.